carp have become a huge problem on the River Murray. In a couple of years, the Commonwealth will begin one of the biggest ecological interventions in our history, using herpes to get rid of the problem fish. But researchers are worried about the side effects. Biological controls have been used in Australia before. Some have been successful. Prickly pear, for example, was almost completely wiped out by an introduced moth. But there have also been massive failures. The cane toad is infamous for the carnage it caused after it was brought in to stop the sugarcane beetle. Bitu Bush 2 aimed to stop sand dune erosion but destroyed native plants and habitats. Nicola Gage reports on the plans for Carpageddon. It's a cool morning on Lake Alexandrina and Zane Scrypek has been fishing, mainly for the native golden perch. Unintentionally, he's also caught bucket loads of carp. Yeah, so I've got probably about um, 100 kilos of carp there. They're known as the rabbits of the river. Since being introduced, the bottom feeders now make up more than 80% of fish biomass in the Murray system and cost the economy an estimated $500 million each year from the damage they cause, which is why the federal government is proposing Carpageddon. In other words, killing them off. If they can remove them, that would be fantastic. You know, the, the, uh, the native fish would bounce back. Um, you know, it would be better for myself and, and the rest of the industry. The plan is to release a strain of the herpes virus, Cipronid herpivirus 3, in 2018. It's been proven to kill carp without affecting other species. Research is now underway to work out how the ecosystem would change without them. Let's make sure we do the planning appropriately. Let's make sure we resource it appropriately and it will need to take the time it takes. But the benefits are significant um, socially, environmentally and economically. There's also the question of removing potentially millions of tonnes of rotting fish. How that will happen is still being investigated. There's a lot of things we need to determine. Um, but so far my research does indicate that there will be huge side effects for the rest of the ecosystem. Small changes in oxygen levels can potentially have big ramifications for native wildlife. So University of Adelaide researchers have been putting dead carp into 800 litre tubs of water to try to measure the amount of oxygen the decomposing fish use up. Although the work is in its early stages, it's showing some dramatic results. We found that uh, at 20 degrees, one carp can almost completely remove oxygen from the water in, in less than 48 hours. It is a, potentially a massive problem that people haven't thought through. And so we're suggesting that a virus is probably not the right way to go. Fisherman Gary Harrising has questioned whether removing so many dead fish is realistic. He says the process can't be rushed and wants other removal options to also be explored. The original proposal about using genetics over a longer time frame was a smart move. This kind of project on such a large scale is unprecedented in Australia. A string of government approvals will be needed as well as support from the public. And there's a possibility that communities along the river will be tasked to help with the clean up. If the risks that are borne out of the legislative approval process and the public consultation process can't be resolved, uh, clearly this won't go ahead. While there is a lot of work ahead, those involved believe ridding the system of carp is achievable, a goal everyone wants to see reached. Nicola Gage, ABC News, Malang.